Good morning, everyone. My name is Bishop John McIntyre. I'm one of the auxiliary bishops of our archdiocese, and it's a pleasure to be here with you this morning to celebrate this mass, closing the solemn novena this year to Our Lady of the Miraculous Meadow. Father Peber, thank you very much for your kind invitation to be the principal celebrant and homilist at this mass. I'm also very grateful to Father Mike Carroll, who's the provincial superior of the Vincentians in this province, and to his Vincentian brothers for their warm welcome and their hospitality this morning. My brothers and sisters, being here at this very beautiful shrine brings back many fond memories to me and strengthens my own devotion to Mary, to the Blessed Mother, to Our Lady. Places are so often very important to us. We can all remember where we were at certain very important moments in our own lives or perhaps in the life of our nation. And so those places become places that are deeply associated with us and with those whom we love. I'm sure we can all call to mind very vividly, for example, the church in which we made our first Holy Communion, or perhaps to those of you who live the sacrament of marriage, you can remember exactly that moment in that place where you met your future spouse and the church in which you were married. These places become part and parcel of the way in which we grow to love God and the way in which we grow to love each other over the years. I have to admit that this very beautiful church, this very beautiful shrine to Our Lady, holds a very special place in my own heart. I was raised here in Germantown, in Lower Germantown, on the corner almost of West Clapier and Wayne Avenue. I would come here with my family on different Monday nights, or perhaps four or nine Monday, Monday nights in a row to make the novena, to ask Our Lady to intercede for us, to ask a particular favor of Our Lady. It seemed easier in my own child's mind to see Mary, who she is, and to love her. So beautifully is she depicted here at this shrine, a mother full of life, a mother full of love, and a mother full of strength. It is just so, just so that we also meet Mary this morning, not only in this very beautiful shrine, but also in the scriptures that have been proclaimed for us by our lector and by our deacon, Homer. For in the scriptures, we come to meet Our Lady and to understand her better, so as to love her all the more. In a scene that is full of such drama and tension, a woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and a crown of stars on her head, gives birth to her son. The forces of evil fail in their attempt to crush her and her son. Her son is brought to the side of God and she is protected amidst the fury of the storm that evil attempts to unleash upon her and her son. Nothing, the words of sacred scripture assure us this morning, nothing and no one will thwart the plan of God from unfolding. At its very heart, at its very center, lies God's beloved Son, the Lord Jesus, and Mary, the mother of his Son. At its heart is the never-ending desire of God for all who place their faith in his Son to never be overcome, but always to overcome whatever might keep us from him. As the story unfolds, as this desire of God the Father becomes more and more known and accepted by his people, we find ourselves at the very beginning of that unfolding, at a wedding feast where both the Lord Jesus and his mother are present. Never one to hide his intentions nor his love, a sign is given by God. And for those who notice it, faith begins. It is a simple sign. A young couple finds himself without wine at their wedding reception. The mother of the Lord Jesus brings this need to his attention. Water becomes wine and the words of the head waiter reveal what God is doing for us in that moment. Everyone serves the good wine first, but you have saved it until now. It is not simply a gesture that saves this couple from a disaster on the most, on the most important day of their lives, but it is a first hint, a first glimpse of what God desires for us and what he is doing for us. Now we all know that wine makes a feast possible and all the more joyful, as is often the case when St. John tells us the story of the life of the Lord Jesus, each detail often points to something else, to something more profound. Wine isn't always just wine as St. John unfolds the life of the Lord Jesus for us. In this wonderful scene, Christ is the wine who makes it possible for the wedding feast to happen 
for us to be one with God. Just as a man and woman are made one on the day of their marriage, so Christ unites us with God. He unites us with his, he unites God with his people in a way that they have never ever seen before, in a bond, a covenant that will never ever be broken and from which God will never ever turn away. When the hour of the Lord Jesus arrives as he spreads his arms wide upon the cross and is then raised by the Father, he forges a bond between us and God that is stronger than sin, than death, than hell itself. In just a few moments, in this beautiful church, in this place, at this altar which we will approach, this bond, this covenant will be renewed as Christ once again through the ministry of the priest keeps us united with his Father and unfolds for us, makes accessible to us the power of his own victory on the cross, the own victory of his resurrection. And so if Christ has truly wedded us to God, if he has united a particular people to himself, then today and all the days that follow in our lives, because we have encountered him, should be, should be different. It is a reality, a mystery, that Our Lady, each and every day of her life, places herself at the service of. She is the one through whom the author of life himself is born into our world. She is the one who stood at the foot of the cross as her motherly heart broke as she accepted the plan of God, even when it, mo went, even when it meant sacrificing what was most dear to her, her own beloved son. And she is the one who continually urges us on as we strive with God's help to keep faith, to grow in charity, and never ever to allow the fire of hope to die out within us. She does so as a loving mother who has faced the challenges of life as we do, and at the same time was prepared for, from all eternity by God the Father to live at the very heart of his own desire that we be one with him and he be one with us. She does so through her humble, strong, and clear example to us, and through her all-powerful and never-failing intercession. So perhaps today, my brothers and sisters, as we come here to renew our own devotion to Our Lady and to encounter the Son which she gave to the world here present within the offering of the Eucharist, we can pray that our love for her will never fail and that our love for her will urge us on day in and day out to be like her, ever receptive to the plan of God within each one of our lives and ever willing to embrace it and to live it.